Our study of right triangles has now brought us to look specifically at trigonometry. Trigonometry, by definition, is the study of triangles. And when we look at trigonometry, there are three basic functions that we're going to run across that are new for this area of mathematics. And these are the sine, cosine, and tangent functions. Now these are normally abbreviated by the first three letters of each one. And what they are is they are a look at the relationship of the sides of a triangle from the perspective of an angle. So you never just say we're going to take the sine. You'd have to say the sine of angle A. Now the ratios are as follows. For sine function, we are looking at the sine of A being the length of the side opposite angle A divided by the length of the hypotenuse. Next, for cosine function, we have the length of the leg adjacent to angle A divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And last, for the tangent function, we are looking at the length of leg opposite angle A divided by the length of leg adjacent to angle A. Now, adjacent means next to. Opposite, of course, we've worked with our straight across. So, when we're looking at a series of functions like what you see below here, we can take the different trig ratios compared to a specific angle. And with these, we do not take them from the right angle, but we take them from the others. So let's find the trig ratios for angle G. So if I'm looking at, well, don't want to start with tangent. If I'm looking at the sine of angle G. Again, I'm looking at the opposite of that angle divided by the hypotenuse. Opposite angle G is 15 and my hypotenuse is 17. Next, if I needed the cosine of angle G, I would look at the leg adjacent. Next to meaning 8 divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent of angle G is going to be the leg opposite, that's 15, divided by the leg adjacent, which is 8. And with these, unless it will reduce down to a perfect fraction or perfect integer, we do not typically can, uh, turn into mixed numbers or convert in other methods. So our three sine, our three tangent functions, excuse me, our three trig functions are the ones that you see here. So we can also use these relationships to find missing values. The trig ratios do show up as values or operations on a calculator, just like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And we can use those along with these known ratios to find what we're looking for. Here we have a triangle where we know it's a right angle. We know that one of the other angles is 54 degrees. The hypotenuse is 17, and we're looking for one of the legs. So the first question is, what is the relationship between this angle that we have here and these two sides of the triangle? Well, from this angle, 17 is the hypotenuse, and this W is immediately next to angle 54. So we're looking at the adjacent side, or the adjacent leg. Now the ratio that involves the adjacent and hypotenuse, if you'll remember, is the cosine function. Cosine of an angle is equal to the opposite, oh, sorry, the adjacent leg divided by the hypotenuse. So we can set up this ratio and then solve. So we can say that the cosine of 54 degrees, and that is 54 degrees, is equal to W divided by 17. Now your calculator will be able to compute the cosine of 54, but we need to solve this for W. Using our multiplication property of equality, I can multiply both sides of the equation by 17, so I will have 17 
times the cosine of 54 degrees equal to W. Using my reflexive property, I can say W equals, and then run through the computations and come out with approximately 9.99. So with this angle and the given hypotenuse, we can find that W is just about 10. It comes in at 9 and 99 one hundredths in a rounded form. But just like with any other angle or any other mathematical operation, the tangent, the trigonometric functions, have inverse operations. The inverse operation of addition is subtraction. Inverse operation of division is multiplication. Our inverse operations, as we were using recently with the Pythagorean theorem, inverse of squaring is square roots. The inverse of these trig ratios are called arc functions. So the inverse of a sine, the inverse of cosine will be an arc cosine, and the inverse of a tangent is an arc tangent. Now the way these are written is if we have sine of a an angle, I'm just going to pick angle A, the inverse or the arc function will be written as sine inverse of the ratio A. So we would take the sine of an angle, we take the arc sine of the ratio. So for instance, the sine of 30 degrees is one half. The arc sine of one half will be 30 degrees. And with this, we'd be able to find missing pieces if we have two sides. So in the triangle that is shown, triangle PTY, we want to find the measure of angle Y. So from Y, what information do we have here? Well, we have the two legs. The only trig ratio that involves the legs is our tangent function. So we know that the tangent of angle Y is going to be the opposite leg, which is 100, divided by the adjacent leg, which is 41. So using that, we can say that Y is equal to the arc tangent of that ratio, 100 divided by 41. Then, running this through computations on a calculator, we have the measurement of angle Y coming out to be approximately 67 and 7 tenths degree. Then, using our angle sums theorem, we can come up with the fact that angle P, angle Y, and angle T have to add to 180. We know that angle T is a right angle, so angle P would be approximately 22.3 degrees. So we're able to solve these triangles with very little given information. So we have, again, 67.7 degrees down here at Y. So this is just a basic introduction into our trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. Also, a look at the arc functions associated with them. And with these, we'll be able to do a lot. So make sure you have these down. You're going to use them here, Algebra 2, Trigonometry, Pre-Calculus, and Calculus. So take good notes and be ready to use this.